So iOS 18 is now officially released and it comes with tons of new changes and features in this video. We're gonna consider new changes and features for iOS 18. And I walk through them step-by-step step showing you why it's practical, why it's valuable, and folks, you don't wanna miss this. Thanks for watching. Be sure to thumbs up, click the subscribe button, and then enable notifications with the bell icon so you won't miss any upcoming videos. Without wasting any time, let's drive into main video. New iOS 18 wallpaper, so the customization that comes to the home screen in iOS 18 is perhaps one of the biggest new changes and features in this huge release. Now, first and foremost, we're gonna have some new wallpaper. And I always like to highlight this because, you know, it's just kind of fun. You get these new wallpapers here. These are the iOS 18 official wallpapers. There are light and dark versions of each. You have purple, azure, pink, and yellow iOS 18 setups now, here's the biggie right here. Flexible app placement. In previous versions of iOS, whenever you moved an app icon and tried to place it somewhere away from other icons, you couldn't. It would automatically magnetically attach itself. But now in iOS 18, you can move apps anywhere on the grid. And that is a huge change to how iOS has worked for the last 18 years. It's like finally, right? The same thing goes for widgets. You can now place widgets anywhere on the grid as well. Previously, you could only do that on iPad OS, but now in iOS 18, you can place widgets anywhere. But that's not it, folks. Now you can also use drag handles to resize widgets under. Let's go into edit mode. Tap. Edit widget in the upper left-hand corner, and then tap the new customize option. This brings you the ability to customize your home screen even further. You can actually switch over to dark icons. Just like that, and you'll see all the icons, including the stock ones, change to their dark versions, even the widgets. Not every app will have a dark version right away, so keep that in mind. You can also switch over to automatic mode, which changes between light and dark based on the time of day, if you prefer automation. There's also wallpaper tint. Locking individual apps is another new feature. You can now lock apps so they require face ID or a passcode to open or show content. This even applies to notification previews or spotlight search results. When you open the app switcher, locked apps will be masked out. Some apps like Maps and Settings can't be locked, but many others can. Finally, you can want to lock and hide individual apps and units for an additional layer of privacy. For an, um, on iOS 18, you can quickly switch between each page by swiping down. You'll see all your toggle controls, including your music and favorites. If you keep dragging, you can easily switch between those pages. You can now rearrange controls, ease of resizing them. For example, to resize the music widget, just pull it down and you can change its size. It's similar to editing apps on the home screen. You enter edit mode, allowing you to resize or rearrange. To rearrange, just drag your toggles and for resizing, use the drag handles. You can even hear or wet a control center page. Go into edit mode, tap the last page and customize it with the controls you want. To delete a control, tap the minus sign in the upper left corner, and you can also browse through additional options, including accessibility and lock screen controls. Speaking of the lock screen, you can now hot customize the lock screen controls. For instance, you can delete the long-standing camera and flashlight shortcuts and replace them with controls like the dark mode or a stopwatch. Long press on dark mode to toggle between light and dark, or on the stopwatch to open it. Let's talk about passwords because this is a major new feature in iOS 18, a dedicated passwords app. You may be thinking to yourself, didn't iOS already have a passwords app? Well, kind of, not really, they had Keychain, 
which allowed you to access passwords through the settings app, but there wasn't a dedicated app like there is now. It's largely similar in functionality, but now there's a dedicated app, which makes it easier to access your passwords. Text effects knew previously we had the full screen effects only, but now you can apply these effects directly to your text, either sentences, paragraphs, or individual text lines. Um, and I'm gonna show you that here. So you see that one, the shake, you also have the nod, but like I said, you can go in and just apply that effect or a single effect to just one word if you wanna do that. Message, get a component placement ability to send later to schedule messages. Yes, you can schedule your messages to be sent later up to two weeks in advance. So here, just for testing, I'm just going to go a minute ahead. So once you select the time, you start sending your messages like that. And you can see, you can change up the time if you want to, but you see the messages that haven't been sent or in that light color with the little dash around them. And as you start typing a current message that's being sent immediately, that appears on top of the send later messages, right? Because it's in chronological order. Uh, you can go in and edit the send later messages so you can send now or edit or delete. And what's cool, what's cool is that this will actually send, even if your phone is dead, because it sends to Apple servers, it's in, in encrypted. So you don't have to worry about anything like that. Math and notes. With what do you guys think about that? Now there's also math and notes, so you can do equations right there within the notes app. So five plus five is 10. You can even use variables. So cat equals 10, dog equals five cat plus dog equal 15, and then automatically gives you the answer, which is nice.